Welcome to What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. The crossroads where culture, lifestyle, and community meet. All hosted by the legendary New York radio TV personality and proud Harlem American, G. Keith Alexander. Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are and what time of day you're listening, either live or podcast. We, I want to say hello to uh, all of our folks in Harlem and beyond, folks out in the rest of the country and uh, overseas who are listening to What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. It's a wonderful day because we have a real music legend with us today. Listen to this. Gloria Gaynor performed I Will Survive on New Year's Eve in New York City's Times Square. The two-time Grammy winner and global music legend performed her global anthem of encouragement and inspiration, I Will Survive, along with Joy Comes in the Morning from Gloria's 20. 20 Grammy award-winning Roots album, gospel album, I, I, I should say, Testimony, as well as her hit song, Never Can Say Goodbye, which was her first gold record. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to What's Hot Harlem America, and she's hanging in the neighborhood here in Harlem, Miss <laughs> uh, Gloria Gaynor. Hello, Gloria. Hello, how are you? I'm doing quite well. I'm so excited to have you here. Right. Cheese and crackers. <laughs> it's great to be here. You know, last time we uh, saw each other was uh, you gave this wonderful masquerade ball uh, out at your home and uh, the music was <laughs> kicking and the, yeah. the, the food was great and the costumes were wonderful. And uh, that's been a while. And uh, yeah. I'm just so happy now to reconnect with you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my great pleasure. So tell us, uh, how have you been holding up during this uh, COVID? I've been holding up pretty well. I've, I've you know, I've, I've had friends say to me how bored they are. I'm so not bored because I've been doing a lot of things. I've been doing um, videos, uh, cameos, and, and different things for uh, organizations who are seeking to advise to help to to get information to people to get help to people and um you know enc encourage and uplift them and so i've been doing a lot of work with that uh for one period of time i was in myrtle beach my vacation mm -hmm. home uh and having to do everything myself being the not only the artist but the engineer and the cameraman and <laughs> It was quite, quite a challenge, but I was able to do it and pleased to be able to do it. Um, so I've not been bored. I have been quite busy. You know, uh, you won't believe this, but I just turned off my own volume here and I can't hear you. So I've got to, uh, while you keep talking, Tell us a little more. I will uh, correct this. Well, now I'm, well, you know, I, I went down to Myrtle Beach for two weeks. And then mm -hmm. when I heard what was happening here in New Jersey, I was like, okay, when you guys get your act together, I'll be back. So I stayed there <laughs> until the end of June. And the strange thing is that when I got back here, as soon as I got back, they locked up South, they locked up Myrtle Beach. So mm -hmm. I made both trips <laughs> just in time. Yeah. Oh, that well, well, that is great. So, well, how how did this New Year's Eve uh, performance come about? Well, whoever is in charge of um, getting the talent for that that uh, that evening called mm -hmm. my management and asked if I was available. And I'm like, oh no, I'm have a million things to do. No, I was very much available <laughs> and very, very pleased to do it and um, really was looking forward to it. So yeah, I mean, it was just, they requested me and I was pleased to do it. Well, this 2020 was a big year for you because you were nominated for two Grammys as well. Yes. Tell us about that. 
Well, that was wonderful because I, you know, doing a gospel album was something that I wanted for so many, many years. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, before I had management that, um, you know, kept trying, putting me off, really believing that there wasn't enough uh, financial uh, benefit to doing a gospel album. I wasn't really concerned about that. I just mm -hmm. wanted to share my faith and, uh, um, you know, and encourage people um, in a way that had even more foundation than what I had done before. So um, now I have management who respects me and my designs and desires for my own life and career. So I was able to do it. And she put me together with uh, her name is Stephanie Gold, by the way. Uh, we know that uh, Stephanie Gold has uh, really taken care of you. And yeah. uh, she's uh, she was in contact with me uh, just the other night, uh, mm -hmm. giving me uh, some information. But uh, now this the album Testimony, mm -hmm. give us a little uh, indication as to what we'd find on that album. Well, there is hope. There is encouragement, there is joy, there is, uh, 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 you know, I feel like gospel music should do what the Bible does, and that is share not only the love, but the knowledge of, of Christ, the, the knowledge of God. And so that's what I've tried to do, we've tried to do with the songs, to impart to the listener the peace, the joy, the love, but also the information about what it means to be a Christian and, and what it means to, to, to follow God. And, and with that, great music that uplifts and inspires as well. We, got, we were really, really blessed to have four wonderful gospel artists to do duets with me on the album. One was Bart Millard from Mercy Me. One was Mike Ferris of the Screaming Wheelie, che Cheetah Wheelings or something like that. <laughs> Great thing, <laughs> but he's a wonderful gospel artist. Also, um, um, Jason Crabb from the Crabb family, very well known in gospel music, and the inimitable mm -hmm. Yolanda Adams. Oh um, yes, so we we had a you know quite a good group of people working with us, and everybody was just so talented and so into it, and and just loved the Lord, and were able to share all of that with, with the public on this album. Well, I remember when you first told me that you were going to do gospel, mm -hmm. uh, what brought you to that, that realization that gospel was where you really wanted to lend your talents? Well, I, you know, if anyone had asked me uh, back when I was young, I would have said I was a Christian. But then as I grew up and grew older, I realized that I didn't really know anything about Christ. And so there came a point in my life where um, I had an experience, really what happened was I had an experience at a party out in California mm -hmm. that my husband and I gave. Um, we were riding high on I Will Survive and we gave this party and at the party, um, we were, first we were drinking champagne, which was my drink. I love champagne. Mm -hmm. And I did anyway, I stopped drinking since then, but I liked champagne. And, um, and then someone came in with some marijuana. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wasn't opposed to marijuana. I didn't do it often because I was more concerned about my voice than anything mm -hmm. else. I didn't, I didn't want to do anything that was going to ruin my voice. Mm -hmm. But that particular night I did indulge and, uh, and then Someone came in with cocaine. Mm -hmm. Well, I did not, I had tried cocaine admittedly. I had tried cocaine, but I hated it. I hated mm -hmm. it. And um, although I was raised by a mother who had been raised as a Christian, I kind of, my mother passed away when I was 25 years old. I kind of lost my way and, mm -hmm. and more concerned with being in with the in crowd than anything else. And so that night, that's what I got caught up in, being in with the in crowd. And mm -hmm. when they brought in this cocaine, um, my ex loved cocaine. Mm -hmm. and, and so did most of the people at the party. Mm -hmm. Well, I hated it. Um, not that I was above doing it at the time, but mm -hmm. I hated it. 
But then I thought, if I'm drinking champagne and I'm smoking marijuana, I'm going to get sleepy. Okay. And these people are going to be wide awake. And there's <laughs> more than twice as many women here than men. And my husband was a, was a woman magnet. And <laughs> I was like, you know, I might have to do some of this here in order to be awake and see and make sure that they don't run off with my hubby. <laughs> so, so I was about to start that. And I don't know what else was going to happen, Keith. I honestly don't know what else was going to happen, but I am sure to my core that something spiritually bad was about to happen because at that moment I felt somebody grab me in my collar mm. and lift me up like that so I had to look up and they said that's enough I heard that's enough very sternly really? and I was visibly shaken I was visibly shaken and I got up from where I was seated and I made my way to the bathroom and I didn't close the door and I was in it going, oh my God, 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 oh my God. I was wringing my hands and then I realized that's what that was. That was God pulling me away from whatever, wherever that party was going and wherever mm -hmm. I was going with it, mm -hmm. it was like, not you. You no, mm -hmm. you're not you're not doing this. I came out of the bathroom, went into the bedroom, and was there the rest of the night. Strange thing is, I don't even remember who those people were. <laughs> I don't even remember them. God just really took me completely away from all of that. And that's what started me on my journey with the Lord. That's what got me brought me into being a, a devoted Christian. And that's what made me want to do gospel music. I wanted to tell the world about this new love that I'd found and, and how it's available to them and, and how it enriches your life, how he enriches your life and, and how you may think you have everything, but you're really wretchedly poor if you don't have him. Wow, what a story. Now, what a testimony. Now, is that in your first book? No, that's in my last book. That's in your last book. book that I'm finishing up now. Okay, so now this will be the third book you're finishing up? Yes. Okay, the first book is called? I Will Survive. And, and, and that's about, about my what? life. Okay, that's about your life. Mm -hmm. the, the second book is? We Will Survive. Mm -hmm. And it is a collection of 40 stories that family, friends, and fans told me about how the song I Will Survive helped them through difficult times in their lives, traumatic times in their lives. Well, you are a shero to many, many, <laughs> many women all over the globe. And I, I uh, encourage people to go to your website, GloriaGainer.com, and take a look at the beautiful website you have. And, and, and speaking of people telling you how you've changed their lives, how you've made an impact in their lives, there are testimonies with, 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 with people, uh, their, their faces, and their long testimonies uh, to you about what you've done for them. And I encourage people to go to GloriaGainer.com and read some of those testimonies. Thank Beautiful, you. In incredible. Uh, and then the third book you're working on is... This one is called Food for the Spirit, Soul, and Body. And it is just that, um, things that will uplift, encourage, and inspire people spiritually, uh, uh, encourage them mentally, uh, emotionally. And then there are some recipes of, of uh, dishes that I've created or have so altered from someone else's recipe that it is now I've made it my own. So. Um, my management wanted me to do a cookbook, but I don't really have enough original recipes uh, to make a, a, a full cookbook. So I decided to put them mm -hmm. in this book. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, you know, we've got uh, less than three minutes left before we go to break, but I, I, I just want to take this moment to tell you that, you know, you're, you're partly responsible for my career being the way it is as well. And yeah, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never told you this before, and it, it just dawned on me uh, recently when I thought about you know having you on the show, <clears throat> and and that's because I remember when y you had your office on Park Avenue. Mm. Uh, I think it was like fifty between fifty six and fifty fifth Street or fifty seventh and fifty sixth Street, mm -hmm. and you uh, allowed me to. Uh, have, I, I think for about a, a month or so, I, I, I shared office space in there. I rented some office space from you. But while there, I asked you uh, or Linwood, I can't remember, maybe it was Linwood, I don't remember, uh, if they could recommend a publicist for me, if, if you could recommend a publicist. And he recommended David Granoff, this young publicist. Okay, okay. And, and David Granoff took my uh, he, he started representing me. And next thing I knew, I had, you know, uh, articles in the, the post and, and, and uh, all sorts of uh, uh, publications. And, and, uh, and, and he helped to, to, to boost my career. So because of you guys, uh, yeah. I want to thank you publicly right now. Uh, and poor David, did, uh, you know, he passed away last year. Uh, and uh, but he was uh, a, a great guy. He, he was really uh, fantastic for my career. Yeah. So uh, when we come back, I, I think we've got maybe about less than a we've got less than a minute now. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, your uh, extension of the Gloria Gaynor brand, and uh, we'll have some other things that uh, that I want to let folks know about uh, next week everyone next Friday at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. Our guest will be the actor producer, Mr. Keith David. He'll be with us. So please uh, check us out. And we'll be right back with Miss Gloria Gaynor on What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. Okay, well, welcome back. And I just want to say to everyone hanging out in uh, Harlem, America right now. I welcome you and I appreciate you and, and I'd like for you to be able to uh, uh, join us every Friday. Right now, though, we're with the legendary Miss Gloria Gaynor, a friend of mine. I've, I've known Gloria for uh, many years. Uh, and of course, during the disco days when I was at 92 WKTU, mm -hmm. uh, Gloria had this big, huge record called I Will Survive. In fact, I used to hang out at Regine's and Regine ended up doing a, a, a version of I Will Survive. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about that song and, and where it has taken you and, and, and how other people have uh, wanted to, to chime in with, with that anthem uh, that has uh, engarnered uh, love and respect and, and uh, and all sorts of warm wishes for you. You know, I, I, they say that, um, and I suspect it's true that imitation is the greatest form of compliment. That song has been recorded over 200 times. Wow. More than 200 different people have recorded that out, that song. And I can't tell you how blessed I feel that mine is still the preferred one. Um, they keep playing it, and it's and it's just awesome. <laughs> it's just awesome. I think it would have been forgotten about by now, but it hasn't been. My version of it, my recording of it, has not been forgotten. And 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 I, I just think it's such a blessing. It really is such a blessing in the way the song came to me and what has happened with it since then and how it continues just makes it more and more um, uh, true to me that this was a gift to me from God, a gift to me to share with the world. That's what I've done with it because when the, when the song let me tell you about. It. Do you know how this song came about? No, no, no. Tell okay. us. And certainly, and, and certainly, our, our 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 fans don't know. So, so let them in on it. Okay. So I was working at the Beacon Theater in New York City doing a show, and I fell on the stage backwards over a monitor. Wow. 
I jumped back up. I finished doing my show. I went out to breakfast with the band afterwards and then went home, went to bed. Woke up the next morning paralyzed from the waist down. Ooh. Yes. I ended up in hospital, of course. Uh, um, and I was in the hospital from March 10th or 11th until the 3rd of July. Jeez, During that crazy. time, the record company um, sent me a letter saying that they were not going to renew my contract. Hmm. I heard from other people that um, people were going around the record company saying the queen is dead because I've been elected queen of discos. So they were going around saying the queen is dead. I was, you know, washed up as far as they were concerned. I, I here I am in the hospital uh, having all kinds of treatments. I'm trying to figure out how, what to do with me, how to fix me, how to, you know, I didn't know if I'd ever walk again. I didn't know what was going to happen with my life. I certainly didn't know if I was going to ever sing again. Maybe, the, maybe as far as that was concerned, the queen was dead. But you know how we can all get to know the Lord when we get in trouble? <laughs> oh yeah. So I was not <laughs> exempt from that. And so I began to pray. I, 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 they came around with some books and I chose the Bible to read. And I, and I have to admit, I was more trying to impress the woman in the room with me uh, that I was this great Christian person. Um, then I, 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 was, I wasn't sincere in the beginning. But as I began to read the Bible, it became sincere. I became, I, I really be, be dedicated my life to the Lord and, um, and started being sincere about it. So then I began to ask the Lord, you know, to, to do something. What are you going to do? You got to do something. I don't have a job. I don't have, I have lost my apartment. I've lost everything. You've got to do something. You got to help me. I left the hospital on July 3rd, not knowing what God was going to do, but confident he was going to do something. And about a month later, the record company sent me another letter saying they were not, they were indeed going to renew my contract because they've gotten a new president over from England where mm -hmm. I was quite popular. And he mm -hmm. wanted me to record a song that he'd had a hit with in England and wanted to repeat that success here with that song. They sent me out to California to record. I'm in a back brace from up under my armpit to below my waist, below my hips. Mm -hmm. This plastic thing made out of that plastic that they make cheap lawn furniture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that brace around my waist. Uh -huh. And I'm wearing these sort of moo-moos that I was making out of beautiful fabric so nobody would know what I was covering up something. Hmm. And I went out to California to record this song. When I arrived, they asked me, I asked them, the producers, what was going to be the B-side? They said, well, we don't know yet. Um, what kind of songs do you like? So I like songs that are meaningful, that have great lyrics, you know, touch people's hearts, good melodies. They said, we think you're the one we've been waiting for to record wow. this <laughs> two years ago. I said, what song is that? They didn't have it with them, but they wrote it out on the paper. And I looked at the lyrics, I'm reading the lyrics. I'm like, what are you nuts? You're gonna put this on the B side? This is a hit song. This is a timeless lyric. I'm standing here relating this back surgery and the fact that my mother passed away not long ago to this song. Everybody's gonna be able to relate everything to this song. You can't put this song on the B side. They said, well, that's the deal we made. I said, well, if it's left to me, it won't stay on the B side. Mm. So we recorded it, brought it back to New York, took it to the record company. They wouldn't even listen to it. Really? They would not even listen to it because the president had chose this other song and that's what they put out as the, as the A-side. That's what they put out. And what was uh, that song, by the we, way? It was called She'll Be Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't called She'll Be Sorry. It was called... Um, what was the name of that song? Just an antithesis of, of I Will Survive. Okay, see, that's how unimportant it was because you don't yeah. even remember it. Substitute, that's what it was called, substitute. What? I'll substitute? be your substitute. Okay. Telling some guy he'll be his substitute, be her, his substitute for the girl who got away, please. Anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, we took the, the, they gave us, you know how they give you in the beginning, they give you a box of records of your own records. Yeah, yeah. I, I took that box, we took that box to Studio 54, gave it to Richie Kozar and asked him to play it. He played it and the <laughs> audience lost it. They went wild. And I, we thought, look, if this, if this jaded New York audience is going wild over this song, this is indeed the hit that I think it is. Wow. So we gave him the box. We told, it to give it, told mm -hmm. him to give it to all of his DJ friends around New York. They did. He mm -hmm. did that. They began to play it. People began to request it, and the rest is history. I've got tears in my eyes. I'm <laughs> what a story. <laughs> And all, I mean, and all this time, all these years that I've played it over and over and over and over and over, and mm -hmm. and and I I never had any idea that that it was an accident, that it was a, a, an afterthought. It was, uh, a, yeah, it was it. But you see, under all that, it was a divine appointment. It certainly was. It was a divine appointment, and all of the popularity of it and the longevity of it to me just proves that over and over. And, and and what 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 was the response from the president of the company? Well, After, they had. Well, you see, what happened was the people began to request it in the clubs, and then they began to request it on radio because now they want to hear it on the way home from work. They want to hear it on the way to work when they're stuck in traffic. <laughs> much they they want to hear. That. I'm going to survive this traffic. Right. So, they, so the radio stations were calling the record company saying, where is this song that we keep getting requests for? And the record company had to say, with much chagrin, mm. uh, it's on the B side of that song that we sing. <laughs> uh, do we do we want to name the record company for the for uh, our listeners? It's got the record knows the record company was Polydor. All right. No, oh, speaking of, you know, I had a record on Polydor years ago myself. Uh -huh. uh, it was called uh, Sneakers, and mm -hmm. Roy Roy Ayers wrote the music. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he said to me one day, we were in a bar. He says, uh, "Hey, why don't we go in the studio tomorrow and, and cut a record?" I was like stunned. I never, no one ever. <laughs> yeah. I, so we went in and uh, we did our Polydor thing. So mm -hmm. uh, all right. So we were label mates. <laughs> <laughs> <Sort of. laughs> that that's an incredible story. So now, because that song has become such an anthem for women, tell us about you know. I I, I support artists and I support uh, small businesses, and and when I look at artists, to me they're a small business. If you've got less than five hundred people working for you, you're a small business. And, and being that you're black, you've got a, a, a black small business, okay, mm -hmm. which is, uh, can be in jeopardy even more so than just a small business. Mm -hmm. But you have decided, you came up with this great idea to extend the Gloria Gaynor brand and, and, and tell us about that. Well, it, listen, we, we've got all kinds of things. We've got t-shirts on my website. We have t-shirts and caps and different things. But what I'm most happy about is that recently I've got an Amazon store. So if you go to Gloria Gaynor, for, I mean, uh, amazon.com forward slash Gloria Gaynor, then you will see these wonderful t-shirts that we have created for young women and little girls to help them to recognize that they can achieve whatever they can conceive. And so we've got this, and, and, we, and, and, we, and we created this emoji of me <laughs> in all professions to mm -hmm. set them up. You can do, and, and it says, yes, we, yes, I can. So yes, I can be a doctor. So there's one with it that she's in a doctor's a white coat with her stethoscope. And there's, yes, I can be a judge. And there's one with a, a black uh, a gown with a gavel. And it's, yes, I can be an astronaut. And she's got her you know, astronaut gear on. And yes, I can be a nurse. And yes, I can be whatever I choose to be. So there are all these wonderful t-shirts um, encouraging these young girls to be whatever they choose to be. And so I'm really, really happy about that as well as the merchandise on GloriaGainer.com. Well, well, that that is so wonderful. But and, and now you also have the "I Will Survive" T-shirt or sweatshirt. 
that uh, I'm sure is probably being uh, uh, flying off the shelves because of, you know, COVID. during this time, during COVID, we certainly need an anthem. And yours is so apropos. <laughs> we have all survived 2020. And, and uh, so let's see what 2021 is, is, is going to bring uh, for us. But I encourage everyone to go out and get an I Survive t-shirt. Yes, t-shirts, caps, sweatshirts. Stay warm at this, at this time. Get a sweatshirt. Fantastic. <laughs> so you also have a YouTube channel. What, what's on the YouTube channel? The YouTube channel I really like because, and, and the fans are, are, are really liking it because it has a lot of the uh, videos that I did in Europe that Americans have not been privy to. And then it has some videos from the United States that Europeans haven't been privy to. So we're, they were able to share what they've seen of me through the years and what they haven't seen of me, they can see now on the YouTube channel um, from different, uh, um, TV shows and and uh, live shows that I did throughout Europe and, wow. and the rest of the world. I mean, I've been to more than ninety countries, so um, you know these videos are from all these different countries. Well, you know, uh, I, I want to talk to you about that because uh, Harlem America. We also have our, our TV channels that we're getting ready to launch, mm -hmm. and I'd certainly like to be able to uh, share that platform with you. Yeah, since you've got that type of content, because we're 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 going to be on Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Google Play, uh, Roku, uh, all of the the apps, uh, social media apps, uh, and uh, and all of the devices. So uh, I'd I'd love to to talk further with you uh, about that. That is wonderful. I I know that I I, I remember your being so popular in Europe mm -hmm. that, that you guys were always traveling overseas. Yeah. And, I, and I, here again, you and uh, Linwood, uh, and I, I mentioned him, but folks may not know who he is, uh, but you mentioned your, your uh, ex-husband. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he was actually your manager okay. and, and, and husband, yeah. Uh, you guys brought me back a coin from uh it was either israel or one of the arab nations and it was a beautiful gold coin that uh uh you, you gifted me and I, I i have it in my 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 storage uh but uh i, I want to thank you for that but but that's how uh during that time you guys were consistently on the move on the move going to these uh your 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 favorite uh, country is what lebanon Lebanon and, and, and why? Because of the people. The people are just so warm and 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 welcoming. I mean, it's the only country of all the countries I've been to, it's the only country that I've been to where you walk down the street and people come out of their stores to say, Welcome to our country. Really? Well, wow. yeah. They just they recognize that you're not from there and they just say, welcome to our country. And they're not trying to sell you anything. As a matter of fact, if you go into a store, you have to have a Coke or a 7-Up or a um, coffee or a tea before you can tell them what you want. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Lebanon. Uh, now, let's a little closer to home now. Of course, you know, you're, you're hanging out with us today in Harlem, America. Uh, how do you feel? What is it you you love about Harlem? You've been to Harlem many times, and in fact, you and I, I think we had dinner in Harlem uh, at uh, Chez Lucien uh, years and years ago. Uh, what is it you like about Harlem? I love the people, of course. They're my people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I love the history. Um, there's rich, rich history in Harlem that people don't really know about and, and need to get to know it, you know, because, I, yeah, there's a lot of rich history in, in Harlem and, um, it's the, and the Renaissance of Harlem is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You were part of that. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 it's an awesome place. Um, and the fact that the Apollo is still thriving there is incredible. 
that's where I got my start. Oh, many artists have started there and started their careers there. And people are still launching their careers from, from the heart, from, from the, the Apollo. You're absolutely right. Well, you know, we, we've got less than a minute before we go to break again, Gloria. But I, I just want to say that folks should be able to go to HarlemAmerica.com because we're going to start populating it with all sorts of rich culture uh, uh, from Harlem and around Black America. And uh, it's going to be a great place. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with the legendary queen of disco still, Miss Gloria Gaynor on What's Hot Harlem America. Thank you so much and come right back. Yeah, welcome back to uh, What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. And our special guest today is the lovely and talented uh, Miss Gloria Gaynor. And uh, she's been a friend of mine for a long time. And I'm telling you, she's still just as beautiful. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, so, Gloria, you're also on TikTok. Mm. <laughs> what, are, what are you doing on TikTok? I, well, the first thing I did on TikTok uh, uh, was a, a Christmas. I think it was the first thing I did was a Christmas um, uh, video. Someone had done, uh, taken my song and had created a little dance to it and people were copying it. And so my manager called me and said, you gotta go on TikTok and you gotta do this dance. Everybody's dancing to your song, you gotta do it too. So I went on with my, the first, actually the first thing I did was when she called me, I was with, I was getting made up mm -hmm. for a TV show. Mm -hmm. And so my man, my makeup artist and I did the very first one. And then she, my make, makeup artist came home with me and we did the other video for, in front of the Christmas tree that this young man had, had created. And then we just went on with it. We did a one with my band and, um, and then I did a little uh, gospel rap um, <laughs> on the, on it, and it just became fun, and um, yeah, it's just this this fun thing to do. Well, you know, I I've been holding off because uh, I can't figure out what to do on TikTok yet. I mean, I see people doing all these crazy and fun things, and 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 I just don't know how to embarrass myself yet on TikTok. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So if, if anyone has any ideas, can come up with anything that uh, you'd like to see G. Keith act a fool on TikTok, uh, you know, please uh, let me know. Uh, that, 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 that's great. So what's coming up in the future for G.G., for Gloria Gaynor? Well, my next, my, my book, my book that I'm going to release uh, hopefully this year, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm taking it now to my um editor and uh and then the, to the publisher and um we'll see when they're you know when they choose to put it out and then um my um documentary ah documentary, documentary okay now all right how far back do you go how far do you take the way machine the, We're the, going the, the, way, back. the way back machine you're gonna take the way back machine all the way all the way back to high school Showing, showing uh, my hometown and the school that I went, my, my high school that I went to, the neighborhood that I lived in and how it's changed. And um, so of course there'll be a lot of pictures from those times and then showing how the neighborhood has changed, how my school has changed, my high school has changed and how ultimately I have changed and grown. And um, so, yeah, a lot, it is good. of course. And, are, are, are you going to include that, that, uh, I, I, I guess you will. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, and, and who's, who's shooting the documentary for you? Um, uh, Betsy Schechner, I think her name is, I'm, I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, she's done a lot of, uh, documentaries. She did Beyonce and she did, um, um, a thing on, on Elvis and, uh, she did a lot of, she's done a lot of. Really? Uh, you say her name is Betsy? Betsy Schechter. Schechter. Betsy, I'm ready for my documentary too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so, all right. So this is great. Um, there was something I wanted to ask you about. Um, oh, 
and you know, uh, this is a, a little personal, but you've been personal the, the whole time we've been on here. Mm -hmm. uh, are you still in contact with uh, your uh, ex-manager? No, I am not. Um, <laughs> I haven't heard anything from him. Um, I hope he's doing well. I pray for him nightly um, that he, he and his family do well, are, are doing well. But no, I haven't heard anything. Okay. All That's right. News is good news. <laughs> what about recording? Are you are you, you gonna do any yes, more recording? My, my as soon as I we can travel safely because I don't want to travel right now, but as soon as we can travel safely, I'm going to go back to Nashville and um, put together another gospel album. And I know we'll have fun doing it, and I'm sure that the Lord will bless the project like He did this one. And I'm just really, really looking forward to that. I mean, I've been writing on my own and he's been writing on his own and then we'll come together. You don't look like a Nashville woman. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. lived in Nashville. Well, okay, all right, okay. But 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 you, I guess because I, I I know you in, in, in New York and New Jersey, and you know, mm. uh, you just don't look like Nashville to me. But I, I, I guess but Nashville the, is, the, is music city. I mean, it's just like, it's nothing but music in Nashville. I mean, it's just music. Wow. The, uh, will we at one time maybe see, uh, you'll have your own uh, venue in Nashville where folks, uh, all your fans from all over the world will be able to come and see you do your, your one woman <laughs> performance? No, nah, I don't see that in my future. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be traveling. I love traveling. You love traveling, huh? Well, that, that's great. So uh, we were talking earlier, um, before the show, about the uh, you had some 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 great words of advice, some wisdom for young women as far as finding a man mm. and, and 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 finding a man who will be that person that will give you the attention, affection, and appreciation that you deserve. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, I, um, and, and looking for material, wanting material for the book, sometimes I just, as I said to you earlier, I just sit in my prayer room and, and, and just wait for God to give me something. He gave me this piece that you will have to buy, get the book to find the whole thing. But it just talks about women appreciating themselves, recognizing their own gifts, talents, and abilities, and then waiting for the right man who will appreciate all that they have to offer, um, uh, knowing their own self-worth and commanding someone who comes into their life to uh, match that and deserve that by treating them as a treasure that they truly are. And so, um, you know, just, just, just talking about not selling yourself short, not overvaluing someone else, um, and just making sure that you get everything that you want and need from a relationship in return for whatever it is you are able and willing to bring to the table. And one line of it, and it says, if you want a 10, be a 10. Don't be a five out there looking for a 10. Right. <laughs> that is, and take it from <clears throat> a man about town, uh, that uh, that is good advice. If you're looking for the man, then you've got to present yourself uh, a certain way. And uh, you, as Gloria said, if you're looking for a 10, you can't be a five. And, uh, but now what if a woman is a five? She should look for a five? Need to be, then she need to step it up. She need to step it up. Because I believe that all of us have it within us to be that 10. And that only, that only means being a 10 only means being everything that God has created and gifted you to be. God has endowed each and every one of us with gift, talents, and abilities that we need to cultivate and, and so that we reach our highest level of productivity and potential. And then you're able to command 
let someone else do the same thing if they're going to be a part of your life. Do you think you have a ministry going on? A ministry? Yes. I never thought of it as a ministry. I don't know. I'm just doing what God tells me to do as he tells me to do it. If it comes out to be a ministry, fine. I don't need the label. Gloria Gaynor. Incredible. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, all right. So I have um, some video mm -hmm. that I took when I was out at your wonderful party. It was a masquerade ball. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I call it a ball, although there was no ball room because the, 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 the masquerade party was all over the house, but it was yeah. also out in your beautiful garden or yard mm -hmm. uh and uh the the band that was playing was kicking is that was that your 10-piece band or no was that was the group called that 70s band and they are incredible they are available for for uh, uh for, for parties and shows and and whatever yeah that 70s band i'm sure if you go on you know youtube or 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 um, just go on google just Google them, you'll find them. They are wonderful. Well, I'm going to send you the video that I have so you can have it for your archives. Because uh, that was, uh, you even started singing and, and dancing <laughs> in the video. <laughs> wow, that, that was uh, uh, very good. So um, we are um, winding down uh, this has been a, a wonderful uh, opportunity to to catch up with you. And Thank and you. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to talk about before we uh, that we haven't mentioned that uh, your manager would like for you to? to <laughs> you know, maybe perhaps just um, reiterate. Uh, go to um, Amazon.com forward slash Glory Gainer for uh, little Gigi and all of her encouragement to young women. And, uh, and visit GloriaGainer.com to find out whatever you want to know about me. Um, watch uh, my YouTube channel. Um, you know, contact me on Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram. Um, you know, follow me on all of those and, and contact me and just say hi, you know. <laughs> wow. Uh We've got now about uh, a little less than four minutes. So I want to remind people that next week we'll have Mr. Keith David from the own TV series, Greenleaf, mm -hmm. uh, where he starred as uh, the, the bishop. And then the week afterwards on the 22nd, we'll have uh, the wonderful actor, producer, singer, Ms. Felicia Rashad. We'll have her the following week. So I want to remind everybody that Harlem America, if you go to our website, you're going to see some wonderful things. Please register for our um, uh, email list and you'll be able to, uh, we're going to put uh, Gloria's podcast up on her own page and she'll have uh, a link to her merchandise and she She'll have uh, whatever she might want to put up on her own page. Because what we do here at Harlem America, Gloria, is when, when an artist comes uh, becomes my special guest here on What's Hot Harlem America, we do our brand support. We help them with whatever brand or small business that they have. Absolutely free, no, no charge. We, we post it uh, on your page, what, whatever you have uh, going on. We want to support your small business. So that's what we do here at Harlem America, which uh, I'm so proud of because if it wasn't for the small businesses here in Harlem, there might not be a G. Keith Alexander. I got, I got my break at the Apollo Theater. I got my break at WBLS and my break at the, the Amsterdam News was the first newspaper to even give me a, a picture and, and caption to announce me to the to the uh, Harlem community way back when. So I'm supporting small businesses, especially small black businesses. And, uh, and so I, I wanna help you do whatever it is that, that, that you're doing. So we've got less than two minutes now, Gloria. This has been so nice. I've learned a lot 
that I did know about mm. the song, the origin of I Will Survive. Yeah. And, and I know that you've got three books, so I'm going to uh, end up reading at least one of them all the way through. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and I encourage people to continue to uh, support Gloria Gaynor. She's a, a wonderful woman, and uh, she's got some more surprises that, that God's going to tell her about that he hasn't told her about yet. Mm -hmm. And we'll find out later on, right? I'm sure of that. I'm sure I'm looking forward to that as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very, very much. And come back next Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. This has been G. Keith Alexander with What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. Thank you so much. Have a great day and a better one tomorrow. And don't judge your brother or sister too harshly on you until you've walked a mile in his or her shoes. Thank you. <laughs>